Hello and welcome back to Curb Stomp City. Today we're bringing you another episode of ECW Lives on TW 2016. Today we're going to be hosting ECW Revolt and ECW Living Dangerously, our next pay-per-view. So we've got one revolt to go before the pay-per-view starts and we are holding it in Madison Square Garden in the well in the theater ne underneath Madison Square Garden which is the Wamu theater so we're hosting in the home of WWF sort of um before we start the show we're just going to look at the backstage the backstage rating's gone up by 3 since the last show um we've got a lot of positive influences so you can pause and see if you want at the minute um, and the only bad influences we've got is the Blue Meanie, who obviously after his botch on AJ Styles, the locker room's turned against, and Kid Cash is extremely negative influence, so we're going to have to look at getting rid of him fairly soon, although he's good to have around to get people over on TV. We open the show with an interview from Paul Heyman interviewing AJ Styles following his injury last week, and he's just given us a medical update, so he's letting everyone know he's had a severe concussion and that he will be back in less than a month and it says here the performance of Paul Heyman was good <clears throat> and it got a D minus 40 then we go to just a promo now of Paul Heyman on his own and he announces tonight's card AJ Styles will be replaced if you remember last week, AJ Styles actually was given a number one contender for the World Heavyweight title by Paul Heyman. Um, but obviously his injury has put that on the back burner. Or the, his injury has delayed that. So now AJ Styles will be replaced by the winner of tonight's main event. Every current ECW champion will get the chance to become number one contender for Rhino's ECW World Heavyweight Championship. The tag team champions Tommy Dreamer and Spike Dudley and the ECW television champion CM Punk will enter a triple threat match tonight. The winner will face the champ at Living Dangerously this Sunday. So that got a C64, which is not bad at all. And there's nothing really to note apart from that. Next up we go to a tag team match. And it says, a terrible match. The Briscoes defeated the Unholy Alliance, the team of Tajiri and Mikey Whipwreck, in 12 minutes 48 when Jay Briscoe defeated Mikey Whipwreck by pinfall with a Briscoe bottom. Jay Briscoe was the weak link struggling to keep up with everyone else's in-ring performance, unfortunately. Um, this is the, the Briscoes' debut on the main show. Mark Briscoe got an above average for his gimmick and Jay Briscoe got below average, which is a shame. Jay was off his game and apparently he is getting better at his gimmick. Um, in terms of in-ring rating individually, Tajiri was the standout of that one with 45. Mikey got 37, Jay got 26, Mark got 37. So no work improvements to note. This was set to be a wild brawl with Jay Briscoe to be the winner. It's got a D minus 39. Then we go into an extremely short match. Rhino defeated the Blue Meanie in 3 minutes 11 seconds with a gore. Uh, apparently it was poorly placed due to the note of calm the crowd before the main event, but that's okay. It was set to Rhino to dominate, Rhino to be the victor, and it was set as a short match. And this is just a bit of payback to Blue Meanie for his botch last week. We're just going to job him out for three minutes to the champ just to continue Rhino's momentum. So yeah, that got a D45. Then we go to just a CM Punk promo. And he says, even if he wins tonight, Punk and Rhino will still respect each other. And that's D plus 53. So obviously they're friends and if he wins tonight, he'll be going one-on-one -on -one with his friend Rhino at the next pay-per-view. Uh, so he's just addressing that. D plus 53. Tommy Dreamer and Spike Dudley are hanging out backstage and a staff member notifies them that the match is next. They wish each other luck and make separate entrances. 
So they are obviously both in the main event. They're tag team champions, but tonight they're going to be facing each other for the shot at Rhino. Um, so this just shows that they are friends still. And yeah, they wish each other luck, but they do make separate entrances because tonight it's about the individuals. Uh, D plus 49 for that one. And we go to the main event, which is a decent match. CM Punk defeated Spike Dudley and Tommy Dreamer in 17 minutes 38 when CM Punk defeated Spike Dudley by submission with an arm triangle choke. Tommy Dreamer carried the match in terms of in-ring performance, which is interesting. This match got the crowd buzzing, it says. Uh, CM Punk got a 47, so did Spike. Tommy Dreamer got a 66, so he really was carrying the match. And everyone's improving. Tommy and Spike are improving in technicals. Punk is improving in performance. So the match aim was epic. And CM Punk to be the victor. And that got a C-55, which is a good main event, I think. Then we go, after the match, Rhino and CM Punk shake hands in a show of respect. Um, Rhino would have been at ringside with Punk, because he's his manager. And then, yeah, they just shake hands to end the show, which sets the picture for the next pay-per-view this Sunday. Overall, the show got a C minus, a 55, which is a great result, I think. We've improved our popularity in 11 regions, and this show lost its popularity in one region. In this show, we got a 0 0.44, so we got 200,000 viewers on Revolt this week. 10,000 less than last week, somehow. And someone asked me to look at Raw's ratings, TV ratings, so I'm just going to do that now. Okay, so Raw are getting around 32.8 for Raw and SmackDown. They get 2.76 for Heat, which is even more than us. Um, yeah, 32 for that one. They're also getting 3.5 million pay-per-view buys for No Way Out. But yeah, around 30, 32 for Raw. So that's what we've got to aim to eventually achieve. But right now, it's not getting anywhere near that. Financially, following that show, we're actually in a profit this month now. We can quickly just look at the finances to see where things have improved from January to February. Um, we got more pay-per-view income and more pay-per-view revenue in February. Our ticket sales were quite a bit more. 100,000 more than what we did in January. TV revenue is just a bit more. Sponsorships is slightly more. We got just around the same merchandise. And uh, miscellaneous, we actually got more as well. In terms of expenditure, you can see we're, we're saving a lot of money on workers. 30,000 difference from the previous month. Show costs are a little more. Marketing's the same. So is merchandise. Production's the same as well. We spent a bit more on miscellaneous, whatever that is. And we actually had to pay 8,000 in tax as well. Following the AJ injury, I've had to offer someone else a contract and we're bringing in Samoa Joe just to make up the numbers. And hopefully he impresses as well while he's here. But we're just going to sign Samoa Joe. We're also going to bring in Kevin Steen. We've offered CM Punk a written contract, a six-year contract. We've offered him $2,390 a month. And I've worked it out. He was, he was on around $500, $700 per appearance. And he was showing five times a month. So I'm thinking this is worth it in the long term. And I'm not sure whether he can actually request a pay rise while on a written contract. So that will prevent that. I think anyway, we'll have to see about that. But yeah, it's just to tie him down and no one else can sign him now. He's got a big future ahead of him in this company. So I think it's right just to tie him down while we can. The same with John Cena. He's got a lot of potential in the company and he's going to be on 1,600 per month for six years. So I also think that is good value for money. And this will mean he's we're going to have to show him on TV more because he's not really been on much. Also, I've set up an alliance 
called the Global Pro Wrestling Connection, and it involves CMLL from Mexico, New Japan Pro Wrestling from, of course, Japan, and Pro Wrestling Noah from Japan. The terms of this agreement is any company can join, but the only thing in the agreement is trading. So you, everyone can talent trade, but that's it. There's no consortium or anything like that in the agreement. Everybody is financially independent within it. New Japan don't seem to want to let anyone in that's below cult at the minute, though. So only the big promotions can get in. These are the, all the promotions that will accept. The only ones that that are above cult that I could have invited were WWF, who said no, and AAA from Mexico, who also said no. And with the alliance comes a new championship, which was actually won for the first time at New Japan's show last night. And the GPWC World Heavyweight Champion is now Tatsumi Fujinami, who is a main eventer on the New Japan roster, and he is the current champion. After beating Satoshi Kojima, it got an 85 grade, which is way more than we could ever even comprehend getting at the minute. So that's great. Um, it's the first time I've ever done this Alliance Championship thing, so we're just going to have to see how it goes. Um, but yeah, it looks like I can't decide who wins the matches on the other on the other shows, so. Yeah, we're just going to go straight to Living Dangerously now. So we are on the day of the pay-per-view now. You can see we've lost quite a bit of money since we last checked. We're now on 73,000. Um, but we should see some pay-per-view revenue come in today. Hopefully we get more than the 66,000 that we got last month. But we'll have to see. Before we book... Before we book the show, we can... Look at the locker room incidents. So we have something involving Bulls Mahoney first. Bulls Mahoney has gotten a lot of heat with the rest of the locker room for his selfish behaviour. So we're going to give him a stern warning. Nothing resulted from it. We've got an incident where Kid Cash almost got into a fight with Tommy Dreamer after he caused some damage to his rental car and refused to pay for it. Kid Cash being a dick backstage. We're going to fine him for that since he caused damage. Now, Kid Cash has a simmering tension relationship with you. Well, don't hurt people's cars, then. The Blue Meanie was brought before Wrestler's Court accused of forgetting to shake another worker's hand when entering the locker room. So we've got Blue Meanie burying himself even more. Uh, the same thing has happened to just incredible and he was accused of not joining the rest of the locker room for a night out and he's sentenced to buy him and he's sentenced to buy everyone drinks and his behavior has improved as a result of this we're going to set our broadcaster now it's our first time on globecast world tv so we're going to be showing in canada on pay-per-view for the first time tonight and we're all over america and it's all medium size so we should get decent buy rates tonight 10,000 on the dot with our capacity. We're going to be in Bridgeport, Connecticut tonight. So we should see a sellout. Hopefully that does well for our reputation if we actually sell the place out. I'm not really sure whether that applies, but it'd be nice just to see a sold out symbol next to our show. But yeah, I'm going to book the show now. So we begin with John Cena versus the Blue Meanie, where John Cena defeats the Blue Meanie in five minutes after a spin-out powerbomb. So this is obviously just to job out the Blue Meanie and to give Cena some momentum going forward. And this got a D minus, which is not bad for a Cena match, considering his popularity and his age. So yeah, definitely decent. And this was set to work the crowd as it started the show. And we go to a promo with Paul Heyman where he announces the next pay-per-view, Global Glory, which is going to be our attempt at challenging WrestleMania. And he says every championship will be on the line, including the Junior Heavyweight Championship. And the first champion will be crowned tonight. So that's a brand new belt here in ECW. This is anyone that is lightweight or below can challenge for this championship. 
and the, the GPWC World Heavyweight Championship will also be on the line at Global Glory. And finally, we will see the first entrant into the ECW Hall of Fame, Sabu. And not only that, but Sabu himself will be here tonight. So yeah, we're going to start the Hall of Fame as well at the first Global Glory and Sabu is the first man into it. We've signed him on a short contract. I think it's a three month contract just to get him inducted um, and to give him a few matches on the card to see how he does. And this got a C minus 57, which is not bad. And the announcing quality lifted the segment and the angle got the crowd hotter, it says. Apart from that, nothing else to note. Then we go to the next match. And after the Briscoes' victory on Revolt on Monday, they got themselves a championship match against the Lucid Dreamers. Spike Dudley eventually pinned Jay Briscoe by pinfall after an acid drop. And the Lucid Dreamers make defence number one of their ECW World Tag Team Championships. And I've kept the tag titles off TV for a while just because it involves paying four workers. And I was tried to cut the costs by avoiding that as much as possible. But this is their first defence of their World Tag Team Championships. I think about a month after they won them, maybe two. Apparently Tommy Dreamer carried the match in terms of in-ring performance. Jay Briscoe again was the weak link, which is not good to see. Briscoe, well, Jay Briscoe got a 34 in this one, and the difference between him and Tommy Dreamer was a whole 30 points. Tommy Dreamer was held back by the chaotic nature of this match. Mark Briscoe is getting better at his gimmick. The match got the crowd buzzing, but the, over bit, but the overbooking of the match didn't sit well with the crowd. So two contradictions there, but uh, yeah, it was set to mayhem anyway just to please the crowd in that aspect. And Spike Dudley is improving in Rumble skills. D plus 48 for that. Then we go to an about that had subpar wrestling and non-existent crowd heat. Brian Danielson defeated Kid Cash, Rojo at Austin Aries in 12 minutes 25 when Brian Danielson defeated Kid Cash by pinfall with a cattle mutilation. And, Daniel, and Brian Danielson is the first ever ECW junior heavyweight champion. And if you're wondering who Rojo is, that's actually Matt Seidel. And I've put, an, I've put him in a mask gimmick to see how he does. A bit of a luchador going on. Um, so, yeah, he's called Rojo, which is red in Spanish. And, yeah, I think it's quite a cool name. But apparently he sustained a thigh muscle strain in his first match in his new gimmick. So hopefully he's not out for too long. And he got an initial rating of very good for his fan favourite gimmick. Rojo was slowed down by the injury somewhat, and Rojo is getting better at his gimmick. Austin Aries seemed off his game tonight, and in terms of individual performance, Brian got a 47, Kid Cash got a 55, Rojo got a 37, and Aries got a 31. Rojo is improving in rumble skills. It was set to steal the show, Brian Danielson to be the victor, and Kid Cash to lose. This got a D plus 49. And there was backstage heat on Kid Cash after his botch caused Rojo to get hurt. So we've got someone else botching as well. And Austin Aries was seething after the match, upset that Rojo almost injured him with a botch move. So a bit of karma there, maybe. Um, then, Sabu is back, then Sabu is interviewed by Paul Heyman about his upcoming match with Super Crazy, which is going to be Sabu's match tonight. Sabu has debuted his extremist gimmick, which got very good. And I've let them both go off the script, and apparently Sabu was held down by that, which is something to note in the future. And Paul Heyman came across well, and the angle got the crowd hotter. And it's got a D47. Then we go to a different match, which was terrible. Uh, just incredible, defeated Colt Cabana in 10 minutes. The match was poorly placed. Apparently they don't like technical matches, which is what I set it out to be. The technical masterclass. So I remember that in the future. The match needed more time in order to tell the story it was designed for. Right, okay. So that's the first, I think that's the first time I've used that. So there's some things, things to remember. Colt Cabana is improving in performance skills. It's got an E25, which is terrible. 
And in a bout that had decent wrestling but didn't have much heat, Sabu defeated Super Crazy in 15 minutes by pinfall with a triple jump moonsault. Which sounds intense. Sabu was really off his game, but he got a 59, which is this which is pretty high. And Super Crazy got 40. And the match was set to be regular, Sabu to be the victor, and Sabu to dominate. So yeah, D46 for that. Then we go to the main event, and in a decent match, Rhino defeated CM Punk in 18 minutes 26 by pinfall with a gore. Rhino makes defence number four of his ECW World Heavyweight Championship. And this match got the crowd hotter. Punk got a 48, Rhino got a 64. No improvements to note. And this was set to be storytelling and Rhino to be the victor. So C-57 minus for that one, which ends the show on a D+. Paul Heyman was used far too much on the show. The show increased our popularity in eight regions and lost its popularity in one, which is fine. So in the speech, we're going to point out Punk and Rhino as good examples and we're going to give some encouragement to Rojo. And pleased, pleased, and Punk was happy with your speech. So Rojo, or Matt Seidel, will be working through his thigh muscle strain. So he's not actually out full time. We'll probably keep him off TV for a little while till he's fully recovered, just so we don't risk making it worse. And super crazy booking complaint. My momentum is in the toilet. You need to book me stronger for a while or I'll be dead in the water. I don't see that happening. And this blue mean is staying the same and that's definitely not happening after his injury of AJ. And ECW living dangerously 2001 buy rate was 0 0.17, which is... 0 0.03 more than progress and we've got 74,000 buys for progress and we've got 88,000 buys for living dangerously which obviously the new provider helped in that and in terms of finances we're now at 233,000 which is insane <laughs> um pay-per-view revenue we got reasonably bit more than what we did last month Ticket sales is nearly caught up last month already. But if you look though, uh, a lot of the expenditure that we had last month hasn't actually gone out this month. So we're expecting to drop considerably. But yeah, I'm just going to end this episode here. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, hit the like button and subscribe for more TEW 2016 and general wrestling content. And until next time, peace.